Okay, thank you, Tadeusz. Uh, so we will speak about the uh, nationalism of the uh, Crimean or Eastern European characters uh, about Khazarian myth as a, as a core of its nationalism, uh, as a core of the national contemporary national uh, identity of this, this group of people. So uh, let's start with the uh, 18th, the uh, end of the 18th century. Uh, after the annexation of Crimean uh, Peninsula by Russian Empire in the, uh, 1783, and after the third division of the uh, Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, uh, Russian government uh, first time uh, faced this very specific challenge. Uh, the new, uh, new um, occupied territory, uh, the settlement with 100,000 non-Christian uh, Jews and Muslims. And it was a problem for, you know, Orthodox empire for Orthodox government. Uh, also um, among different Jewish groups, uh, be mentioned uh, Crimean or Eastern European uh, it was a small group, about uh, 12,000 people in all communities of Eastern Europe, uh, but um, it was the people with their specific beliefs, um, this Turkic spo spoken language, very oriental look. Um, so uh, the Karaites aroused a special interest of the uh, Russian governors. Um, according to cameralism, uh, state philosophy uh, in a Russian absolute monarchy, it's philosophy copied from the uh, Prus Prussian uh, German uh, state model. Karaites uh, from the uh, newly annexed by Russian empire territories, it was Crimea, it was Western Ukraine uh, uh, and was um, Lithuania. So these uh, groups of Karaites uh, have to um, occupy some niche uh, in uh, imperial hierarchy of peoples, uh, find own place among other subjects uh, of Russian crown. Uh, so um, from the uh, governmental point of view, a stat status of the uh, Karaites um, have to be clarified. So who are they? Jews, non-Jews. Uh, um, also Karaite leaders have to communicate with the uh, Russian governors. First of all, uh, to represent the community as loyal to government, as group loyal to government. Then um, to gain, to ask about some benefits, for instance, in the uh, taxal sphere. Uh, and finally, to protect community uh, against new uh, Russian restrictions um, against Jewish population. Uh, indefinitely, it was the easiest way for Karaites to be successful, uh, to occupy a good position in the Russian Empire. Uh, it was to outline their non jiviness So it was reason to separate from the uh, Rabbanit Jews uh, it's process uh, very good uh, described by the uh, Philip Miller. So um, I don't think, I really don't think if the uh, such karate separatism in Eastern Europe was some unique or new phenomena because through the age of existence, karate, especially in Eastern Europe, were separate, uh, separated from uh, Rabbanit uh, Jewry. First of all, uh, because of the religional uh, um, differences, but also because of the language uh, Karaites used to spoke uh, or 
in Polish uh, language or in uh, Tatar language, but also spoke uh, own uh, Turkish dialects. Uh, Jews, Rabbani Jews usually spoke uh, Yiddish, so it was uh, um, uh, language differences between uh, Rabbani or and non-Rabbani community, especially in Lithuania or in Western Ukraine. Uh, big cultural differences uh, between uh, Rabbanites and Karaites. And uh, finally, uh, in um, many regions of Eastern Europe uh, existed some uh, difference uh, between Karaites and Rabbanites in legal st status. Uh, we know about, for instance, some rivalry uh, between the Rabbanim and Karaites in the old capital of Lithuania in Troki because um, Karaites were able to live in a city Rabbanites now. Uh, uh, so, uh, I think uh, the uh, separatism of Karaites, uh, their intention to separate uh, from the uh, Jewish uh, majority in the end of 18th and beginning of 19th century, uh, have uh, the basement in the, in, the, in the medieval history. So, uh, how the Karaites apply the idea about non-Jewish um, origin. I think Vasily Grigoryev, Russian uh, Orientalist, was probably a first historian who intentionally proposed an idea about Khazars as a possible uh, ancestors of the Crimean or Eastern European Karaites, uh, but he was now only one. It was very um, widespread uh, idea among the uh, Russian historians in the 19th century. But um, from the Karaites perspective, the Khazar theory has one big disadvantage. If only Crimean Karaites were descendants of Khazars, as they should be technically um, Mamsari uh, bastards uh, in pure Karaites uh, law, conversion is strongly forbidden. So uh, first Eastern European uh, Karaites intellectuals who tried to construct the, uh, or reconstruct the origin of this group argued with Grigoryev and his colleagues and his theories. Um, so probably the most influential uh, Karaites sage of this period was Abraham Firkovich. Uh, it was a very ambitious and educated person uh, who um, received a task from the leaders of Crimean community to collect materials uh, concerned uh, to origin and history of Karaites in the, in the region. Uh, and definitely these materials were requested by the Russian governors to understood uh, uh, about um, history uh, and about um, special niche of the Karaites in, in, in the empire. Um, so, um, um, no, uh, Karaites traditional uh, historiography used to search for ancestors uh, of the group in the period of first temple or at least in the later Tanakhim period uh, to just to outline uh, on the purity of Karaita doctrine uh, in comparison with uh, Rabbanites. Uh, Rabbanites Allah, which claimed as a later and corrupted. Uh, Firkovic also work, uh, have worked in this traditional way of writing history, uh, collecting material for his main uh, book, Sefer Avnezi Karon, the book of the uh, old um, tombstones. Uh, he created this fantastic theory uh, the, which deduced the origin of the Crimean Karaites from the uh, lost 10 tribes. Uh, and finally, his theory was forgotten until the end of 19th century, 
but discussion over old manuscripts and in, in epigraphs uh, uh, collected by him to prove his theory uh, has been continuing until uh, last years. Now it is no doubt that constructing his version of Karaitis history, uh, he used to forge a lot of documents and epigraphs uh, and trying to solve his theory, uh, not only to Karaitis or to Jews, uh, but also to Russian governors uh, and Russian educated audience. Uh, Firkovich uh, mentioned in few places, uh, hazards. Hazards probably converted into the Judaism, uh, converted according to the Firkovich by Karaita missionaries. Uh, but in his theory, Hazars weren't uh, ancestors um, of the Karaites. They just uh, had lived uh, beside Karaites, but not together. It was very um, necessary for him to outline it. That to get, uh, beside, but not together. Uh, paradoxically, but only this element of his theory preserved in the public uh, consciousness and in academical discourse. Uh, from um, many points of view, Firkovich and his heritage, um, like um, you know, a bridge between uh, tradition and modernity, uh, between traditional Karaita historiography and modern modern history. Uh, uh, his great negative influence on the Karaita studies, so-called long shadow of Firkovich, can't be uh, even uh, overestimated uh, because after him, many materials and evidences concerned to Karaita's history uh, perceived by the academicals with very big suspicious. Um, okay, um, so uh, later in the um, end of 19th century, very beginning of 20th century, a new generation of Karate intellectuals um, use the pieces of the uh, Firkovich heritage uh, to prove uh, the hazard myth to prove the hazard origin of the Karaitis. Because in the end of 19th, in the beginning of 20th century, new generation, uh, secular generation of the uh, intellectuals uh, was ready to apply the theory about non-Jewish uh, origin of the Karaitis. Uh, and paradoxically, they, uh, it seems that they weren't uh, read Firkovich. Uh, anyway, they weren't read the original version of his, his book. Um, twice in the beginning of 20th century, he writes tried to uh, publish the uh, translation of Firkovich, uh, the fire of Nezi Karon onto Russian language, but uh, each time uh, published only a few um, a few parts of, a, of his big book. Mm. So, uh, okay, so 20th century, uh, Karaitis, Karaitis intellectuals apply the Russian history, apply the Russian version of his history uh, about uh, non-Jewish, uh, probably Hazarian uh, um, origin of, of, of community. Uh, and it's, it's, it is necessary. They separate from the Jewish community. They apply the version uh, of the non-Jewish um, origin and they create the own national uh, identity. No uh, new uh, national uh, mythology. Uh, modern mythology, not uh, old uh, mythology typical for, for a pre-modern community. So uh, in each um, national uh, myth in the Europe uh, lay down uh, in the basement few myths. Uh, very important myth is the myth of the military glory. Uh, it is very necess necessary part of each national mythology in all Europe. 
and creators aren't exception. Uh, militarization uh, in writer's case uh, manifested itself in the appearance uh, of the uh, Karate historical uh, narrative of stories related to the uh, military, some fictional military part of the Karaites. All the stories uh, are almost entirely fiction, uh, fictional. Um, even first evidence about military tradition in the uh, Crimean community of Karaites, uh, it's is no more that a fake created by the Karaites rabbi uh, Shlomo Bem in the middle of 19th century. On probably only few information about Karaites in Lithuania who gain uh, a special status, uh, who uh, apply for a, stat a status of a gentry. Uh, it's a very weak basement for a, um, uh, construction of the military myth. But the myth was constructed, uh, especially in the uh, interwar period in the Lithuania, uh, pardon me, in the Second Polish Republic in uh, contemporary uh, Lithuanian uh, Vilnius. Um, the um, bunch of Karaite intellectuals uh, used to create the uh, big mythology about Karaites as a military nation. Uh, maybe uh, most uh, famous of this uh, group, a member of this group was uh, Saraya Shapshal. Mm, very interesting, very educated person. Um, the uh, collaborator uh, with the Russian uh, intelligence service in the uh, pre-Soviet period, um, professor of Tukology um, and uh, spiritual leader of the Karaites of the Russian Empire and then of the Second Polish Republic. Uh, so uh, he and his uh, colleagues create the myth about Karaites as a uh, nation who had served in the um, Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, as a military nation, uh, about nation uh, with a long and uh, rich military tradition. Um, why? Uh, first of all, because uh, correct uh, leaders in the interwar. Uh, Poland has a good example beside them, uh, has example of uh, Lithuanian Tatars who were actually the military nation. Um, and um, also because uh, all of uh, these intellectuals uh, were a very warm paladin of the uh, hazard theory of the origin, created origin and from the, their point of view, um, descendants of the Hazars uh, have to be warriors. So this is why they uh, create the uh, fake military history of the Karaites uh, in the 1920s, 1930s. Uh, the second process uh, in the um, group identity of Karaites, which took place in the interwar period, we call uh, Turkization. What does it mean, Turkization? It's a, a number of changes in culture that took place during the uh, interwar period among the Karaites of the um, Second uh, Polish Republic. Uh, namely, it's the expansion uh, of the use of Turkic dialects and even the publication of the Turkic language press. Uh, probably a most significant change in this period was an uh, expulsion of Hebrew from the uh, Karaite liturgy in the Second Polish Republic. It also wasn't entirely new process uh, because Karaites of Eastern Europe 
has an old tradition uh, of translation. Tanakh, uh, we also know about, uh, not only Tanakh, but also another uh, liturgical text. Uh, we also know about uh, problems with understanding Hebrew uh, in the small communities. Mm like uh, Galich or Lutsk in the Western Ukraine. Uh, but only in the interwar period, the Turkization, using uh, Turkic uh, dialects in the all spheres of the life became so uh, intentional process. Uh, so um, actually, um, until the end of the Second World War, uh, Karaitis identity in the Eastern Europe uh, formed as the identity of separate Turkic nation. Uh, uh, mostly, uh, I think majority of the people uh, in the period, uh, of Karaiti people in the period of the Second World War uh, just weren't associate uh, themselves with the uh, Jewish people. Mm. Is it bad or good? I don't think. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, is it process and is it nationalism uh, is artificial? I think uh, all nationalisms in Europe are presumably artificial. All the national ideologies uh, are artificial. So, uh, if we compare the case of Caritas in the 19th and 20th century, this Irish, this Ukrainian, uh, this um, maybe uh, Belarusian cases, we will find uh, many, many um, connections. Uh, we um, could talk about some, um, uh, some uh, elements in the Karaitis nationalism, uh, typically for not for Eastern Europe, but for all this nationalism, uh, like in British, English nationalism or uh, uh, nation, German nationalism, because uh, I think uh, mm, writers also has a old tradition of translation of uh, holy texts, uh, of translation of Torah. And uh, it was necessary probably uh, for creation of a separate national identity uh, because um, the um, Old Testament in Christian tradition or Tanakh in the Hebrew tradition, full of the idea of a nationalism. So uh, I think the good theory that um, all uh, nations, all people who translate uh, or um, Old Testament or Tanakh onto national language, uh, gain the key to the door for modern nationalism. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you very much. I will wait, waiting for for, for questions. Uh, thank you, Maxim, for uh, for your presentation. Um, I would like to ask the audience for a question. Uh, if you are not able to speak because sometimes it's not very comfy. So please raise your hand and I will unmute you and you will be able to raise a question by a microphone as well. Um, meanwhile, Max, I would like to ask what's the, um, what's the current situation uh, uh, with this tiny minority? I mean, uh, how, uh, how, how is the situation, especially after the, um, uh, after the Soviet Union collapsed and in the last few years of the uh, Russian occupation of Crimea? Um, okay, so uh, uh, after the uh, Russian occupation of Crimea, 
uh, in the, um, I think, uh, 2016, the Crimean community, I mean, community in the repository, stop the um, stop publishing of the of a newspaper so i think uh, it's could be related to the new situation in the occupied uh, ter ter uh, territory so uh, last number dates back to the i think 2017 uh, now nearly all ukrainian uh, I mean, existing uh, Ukrainian currency communities um, occupied by the Russians. It's Crimea and it's the uh, uh, South uh, Ukraine in Melitopol. Mm, Western Ukrainian community, uh, unfortunately, um, die as communities. So uh, from Lutsk, nearly all people uh, um, come to the Poland after the Second World War. Uh, last crisis in Galich, um, in Galich, uh, uh, according to my information now, only one living person in, in Galich community. So, okay. mm, so it's not... very, it's very, it's very small community, and uh, especially after the. Um, falling of the Russian Empire in the, uh, 1917, and after the Russian Civil War, uh, thousands of Karaites were killed or uh, have to leave the uh, Eastern Europe, have to immigrate. So it's very now it's uh, artificial. No, no, uh, pardon me, it's the um, relic nations, small, very, very small, and very relic nation. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, we have one uh, one written question by Joseph and another one, um, somebody who raised his, his or her hair. I will um, soon unmute you as well, but let's start with Joseph Levin, who actually writes an interesting comment and question. The Israeli rabbinate ruled that the Karaites are Jews. So if Karaites don't consider themselves to be part of the Jewish community, why did so many come to Israel? Why do you think? Do you think um, first, this? Of all, uh, first of all, first of all, only um, um, first of all, um, uh, we will uh, we, we talked about the um, only about the characters of the Eastern Europe. It's small and very special group with a very uh, um, sophisticated history. But thousands of Karaites historically lived in the um, uh, um, Mediterranean area, in Egypt, in uh, um, to, um, Osman Empire. Uh, and this group of Karaites uh, felt themselves uh, as a part of a Jewish uh, community in wide uh, meaning, you know. Um, <laughs> um, and you know, um, in the, um, Eastern Europe, the relationship between uh, Jews, Urbanic Jews, and Karaites uh, was very um, bad because Karaites are minim, uh, heret heretics. Uh, in the uh, Mediterranean area, uh, Jewish, Jewish Urbanites. Uh, Loved even uh, mixed marriages with uh, Karaites. We have a few examples in the Egypt and the, uh, in the Osman Empire. So uh, it's two uh, different models of relationship. And uh, people who come to Israel, it's mostly uh, Karaites from the Mediterranean area, it's not the Karaites from the Eastern group. And finally, not all um, Karaites are um, support this um, this series about non-Jewish origin. First of all, and then uh, technically uh, in Israel come uh, many groups of people who aren't Jewish people by origin, but uh, became the Jewish people through the giur. So 
um, it's also about the <laughs> the correctest if we apply this uh, theory about non-Jewish uh, origin of this community. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, another question, Emily Klein is asking, did others, meaning in that case, uh, Nazi Germans, consider Kavarit's Jews as Jews during Shoah? No, 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 no. Uh, the um, Germans apply the theory of the, about non-Jewish uh, origin of this community. They uh, prove the theory uh, in the uh, 1942, 1943, uh, they sent a special expedition to uh, Troki, to Lithuania and to Crimea to, you know, to uh, check the characters. And, and it was a very sophisticated, it's it's very sophisticated story how the characters um, uh, uh, survived during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. But usually they are all survived. Um, okay, thank you. Oh, we have another few questions, <laughs> so I will read them. Um, okay, Chaim Seidler Feller is asking, what is the relationship between the Karaites and the Jews in Lithuania today? Um, they uh, live beside. Uh, they um, sometimes um, has a conflict, first of all, because uh, uh, the Karaites defend their special status in the, uh, Lithuania and even later in the Russian period. And actually, uh, from the other hand, the um, Karaites have to uh, pay uh, the taxes sometimes kind of taxes uh, through the uh, VAD, through the Jewish um, um, uh, assembly. And this was a problem for them to, to collaborate with the urban Jews in, in, in this way. Uh, in general, uh, the relationship between the uh, urban and Karate, Karate is, uh, in Eastern Europe uh, were much more worse in comparison with the relationships uh, between these two communities in Mediterranean area. Yeah, okay, so actually the, your, the, your, your last sentence somehow correlates with another question, uh, but the, and, and I will read it loudly as well. So are the Euro Eastern European Karaites at all aware of and connected to the worldwide Karatean community? Ah, it's a very interesting and very sophisticated question because, um, you know, uh, we Karatees have a very sophisticated kind of alaha, especially concerned to the mixed marriages. So technically, from the point of view of worldwide uh, Karait, uh, communities, the post-Soviet Karaites, Karaites of the, um, from the Eastern Europe, very suspicious from the point of view of these uh, um, strictly uh, rules. Mm -hmm. uh, so technically they all can uh, be uh, mamzeri. You know, understand? Oh, yes. After the Soviet, after a few generations in a in a Soviet condition. So, but it's maybe it's it's, it's a question. I'm not you know um, able to answer on this question. Maybe it's good question to uh, Alexei Kefeli. It's a Karait uh, rabbi from the. Uh, Eastern Europe from the Crimea. He lived in Ashdod, so it's a question to him, not to me. Sure, of course, this is um, more. Um, the, the answer is more um, has many layers. Um, okay, another question or comment, a question and comment from Michael Fultz. Um For some small groups like Karaites, do they believe that heritage? 
and purity of sacred texts, like rejecting rabbinic tradition, protects their identity. If you... I don't think that this group of people uh, thinking in this way. I don't think even that um, it's possible to think uh, in this way for uh, um, group people. Um, I think um, mm, uh, they um, preserved as a, you know, um, as a small uh, group with their own identity, not only because they rejected of the Rabbani tradition. Moreover, in many cases, especially in 19th century, uh, Karaites of the Eastern Europe used to apply the Rabbani tradition just because of the gaps in their own Alaha. But uh, the case of the Eastern European Karaites very special because they have very different language. So the language, the culture, not only religion, it's a wall who protect this community. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is very interesting. Um, thank you, Max. Um, actually, we do not have more written questions. So. If there is anyone who would like to ask additional question, uh, please raise your hand and I can unmute you. So it might be also easier. And um, so we will wait for a while. Meanwhile, um, I would like also to invite you um, next week, uh, we will host actually a very different subject book is we will host um, a translator who translated Harry Potter into Yiddish. Uh, so I'm uh, just sending you the link in our chat. Uh, please, you can uh, enroll, register yourself for next uh, week event. Uh, actually, also there are Max, there are many comments like thank you very much. Uh, and people are wishing you further academic achievements and of course a lot of safe uh, and being safety in the current situation and we we are all support you personally and i guess the country in this incredible fight for <clears throat> your freedom oh actually we do have last question <laughs> so before yes will... yes uh uh, uh, let, let me just read because I'm not sure if everyone about about DNA uh, tests. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Uh, um, uh, about I mean I think ten years ago, uh, <coughs> and, uh, it was the uh, big uh, data um, um, extra test uh, of many, many Jewish uh, communities uh, through all uh, world. And uh, the um, picture for Eastern European creators uh, was very close to the um, picture of the DNA tests uh, in, in some regions of the India. Uh, I mean, tests among the uh, Jews, Malayalam. So, Karatis, it's typical mixed community, uh, Jewish in the core, but with the mixed marriage. Thank you. This is really very interesting uh, how the DNA and the genes can travel around the world. <laughs> Uh, of course, I'm saying this as a joke. Okay, uh, Max, thank you again. It was really a pleasure to host you. Uh, and we are, uh, we thank you very much for being able to speak to us um, from, from Ukraine, from your army base. And uh, let's hope for a better future for you, for your country and for all of us. And I just post the link. Uh, the, the, I would just to remind you also to, uh, to Max, to you, the, the lecture was recorded and will be available 
under the link I just posted in our chat uh, and we will upload it in, in two days. So you should be able to see it on Tuesday. Uh, as you see, Max, there are very much, uh, a lot of comments. Thank you and a lot of appreciation. So thank you for joining us. Thank you everyone for coming uh, and see you next time. See you. See you, thank you.